Welcome, students, to another episode of Man Hit Academy Podcasting. The class has one person in it, and this class will probably last for maybe 30 minutes, if that. We have Zyger with us. He's recovering from depression. His girlfriend has left him. His life is in shambles. He is no longer, he's no longer enjoying the fruits of his pseudo-success at Man Hit Academy. He's ready to call it quits. Let's hear from the Zygonator. I'm not ready to call it quits. I, I knew, I think I even made a comment on records saying that I had no idea what, is, what I was talking about during the relationship. Oh. Now it's just the, the fruits of my incompetence. The fruits of his blossomed. incompetence have come home to roost. Exactly. Um, I think, well, I just took a wild stab in the dark at why you're depressed, but I think we hit the nail on the head. Um, let's cut, let's go right into it since, uh, we got a little time anyway. All right. Well, well actually, there's actually more to it. Mm. The, the same day. Hold I, on, then let's, uh, let's, let's handle matters, first matters first. We'll save the juicy stuff first. In one second. So let's get right to, uh, where do we put it? The, oh, I'm in the wrong section. Academy invades YouTube? Yeah. No, we want to go to expression section because you just updated this and we want to consolidate this. So, um, where did you put it? Components of good expression. Uh, There you go. Got it. Components of good expression. So you made a cheat sheet and I like this because the other one is, uh, punishment for the eye chart. This one is a very beautiful eye chart. Very nice contrast. All right, so you're working on some updates. Have you made any yet, or should we just discuss yes, I'm them right now? Yes, in the process of changing the expression chart. So I'm, I'm just going to make two columns, do's and don'ts. Okay. And then for the procedure, I'll try to shorten it, but stuff, because anything that I want to take out, I realize that it's going to make it more difficult. Because, yeah, it is long. It is kind of a pain. Here's my recommendation. At least it's clear. Here's my yeah. recommendation is for simplicity. Uh, for instance, part one, you have form. Oh, who do we have? Whoa! It's a new kid. Who's this guy? <laughs> Who's the new kid? Danny boy. This is Danny boy. Oh, first time in class. Welcome to class. Danny boy, do you have headphones? Plug him in. I can hear Plum bouncing on your back wall. He's bouncing it. He's making. He's making a track. Come on, man. Pretend that's a gun and lock and load. Get that microphone plugged in there. Get those headphones plugged in. Uh, we're just relaxing while Danny is performing surgery on his computer to get the headphones in. Oh, sweet. He's got a sweet pair, too. He's got a Halo headset. Microphone down. Microphone down. There you go. Microphone engaged. Danny. Okay, before we begin, we're going to do a little maintenance here. Zyger. One of our uh, one of our students has graciously provided you with this expression in the expression section. You'll find this post called "Components of Good Expression." What Zyger is doing is making a cheat sheet for students to make it very simple for them to practice their expression. We're trying it's to not yet. yeah, we're trying to consolidate this into little parts to make it super simple. We're gonna have more students popping in. So oh, we already got the Big L. Big L, where are your headphones? Yeah. Big L, you like to punish me without your headphones, don't you? <laughs> All right. Hey, Danny. Yeah, what's going on? Well, we got echo from you. So what I want you to do right for just right now, see that little mi- microphone button up top there? Just hit the hit yeah. the microphone. It'll mute it for a second. Oh, nice. There we go. Okay, so no, we, we don't have it. So uh, when I call on you, you're going to have to hit the microphone button again. It'll unmute it. But right now we're just going to cover this real uh, this important thing real quick for you. And for the other students who are podcasting right now. So we got this uh, post Zyger's trying to put together. It's got a couple points on it that talk about expression. So we're just going to crunch them together as much as possible right here. So now for form, this is the cheat sheet right here. We got expression, uh, the post length. So we're going to stick with about 350 words. That's fine. We want to try to get to that benchmark. So that's kind of like a goal we're going to shoot for is 350 words for your expression post. One, One thing I do mention is that I recommend not making it too long. Because it's going to make it harder for other students exactly. to write them or read them. Especially guys who hate writing or just starting to work on their expression. 350 is going to feel like a, a big essay for them. So I would say a range. I would say like a range of maybe uh, – two. what's 200 words? Like a couple paragraphs? No, a paragraph is like 200 words. If I write a three-paragraph essay, it's going to be like 500 words. Yeah, okay. I would say 300 is not <laughs> – 350 is not that much. I would say – I would put it into simple terms for them like – I would say two paragraphs to 350 words, so it kind of keeps it in a range. So they have in their mind, okay, I can at least write two paragraphs. That's not too daunting a task. So I would say uh, two paragraphs or 350 words. Uh, definitely paragraph breaks because we don't want one big wall of text. Check for bad grammar. I would also put a little note in there, read your 
instead of check for bad grammar, it's not specific. I would just say read it your post out loud to check for grammar because that's much more specific and it's easier to catch mistakes. Twelve steps, but yeah, that's making. Yeah, I, I, but the cheat sheet should be the simple thing. I'm thinking of what's the simplest things, uh, small, right. uh, shortest distance between two points. Provide enough context, not good enough for the cheat sheet. It should see, say something like give enough background. You're trying to convey the sense of give enough background information, give enough static information to to get your point across. So yeah, provide enough understand. context should just be clarified a little bit. Okay, now being candid should be moved under convey your reaction. So you want to have cut out the bullshit, which is too vague. You should say something like what you talked about, those points about yeah, lies, not, uh, remove the lies, remove the omissions, and uh, sarcasm, like sarcasm etc. So I would just put little bullet points for specific things like remove the sarcasm. Don't act like a clown in your post. You're not trying to entertain us. Just little bullet points like that are better than just saying something general like cut the bullshit because that's too general. Doesn't doesn't really say that much. Then on the positive side of being candid, I would say share your – that's where the convey the reaction part is combined with it. It would be you know share your thoughts, share your feelings, make sure you're using the first person. Vivid reactions is too vague, and that kind of goes under being specific. Like a lot of these things are going to be cut out by being specific. So in the being specific part, I would keep that, but I would use little examples like this versus this. I had a good pizza versus you know saying something more more specific about your reaction to it. Are we going to have enough room in the cheat sheet to put examples? Yes, if you remove the rest of this other stuff that is unnecessary in the cheat sheet. So it should be the like the form, and then the other part would be convey personal reactions, and then it would be more. It would be easier to just get rid of the being candid part, put the form part at top. Candid, under candid reactions, you're just going to have those a couple bullet points, and under the and on the side of the bullet points, just little things in the parentheses to give you an example of each one. So, for instance, uh, be more specific. Um, my life sucks. Very general versus uh, my dad was absent during my childhood. So it's it's more specific. So it, each thing is pointing to a specific direction so they have an example of what to do and what not to do. So they can kind of check back on their post. Does my post just say um, – and then another thing, like a little bullet point where you have avoid vague adjectives. I would take that out and use my suggestion where it says use specific uh, – what was it? Use – or it should actually go under be specific. Another example, for instance, avoid adjectives like good, bad, you know – mean, nice, instead of saying my uh, I had a good experience at Disneyland, I had a bad experience at Disneyland, give a specific example of conveying that. So I think those little little parentheticals or those little notes on the side will be a lot better for a cheat sheet. Like I would I would you know I would even say fewer items with bigger descriptions and then you could cut down, it's easier to cut down there versus just have like these little short points that really don't help. Okay. Rework it and then we'll we'll work on it again. So I just want to cover that and make sure we got that out of the way. All right. All right, let's get to it. Depression 101. Zyger has lost his honey, his honey pie. That's right. His girl. And it was actually a double whammy. Double whammy. No more I'm vagina. Saying, no more vagina I'm for Zyger. I'm president of uh, Toastmasters Club, so uh, right? got plenty of members. Okay. And uh, one of my lieutenants, so to speak, one of the most uh, consistent guys, in the morning, he sent me uh, like an email, a long email saying like he was quitting, there were things he doesn't like, blah, 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 so... I Kept them all bottled morning. inside like a nerd and didn't bother to talk about any of them exactly. and then just decided to rage quit. See you later, right. bro. So, I'm out. At the last minute, I had no forewarning of this. It was like, <laughs> man, so. Reminds me of Manhood Academy students. Rage quit. Professor's <laughs> mean. He doesn't help me. He never he never helps me on the podcast in class. He doesn't do anything. And I'm thinking, has this guy posted anything in his expression thread? No. Has he posted yeah. e any EM reports about his displeasure with how things are run? No. Has he talked to any of the students? No. Has he formed any relationships with any of the students? No. So all these things like, the same type of pattern with guys who let things build up in their head. Ah, oh, this guy's offending me. I'll just let it slide this time. Oh, this problem here. I'm just going to let it slide this time. And then slowly over time, all these little things accumulate. They don't know how to address them. They just one day blow their lid. Ah, oh, fuck this. Yeah. Fuck this county. Fuck other, this place. I'm on the other side of the snapping now. So. All right. So you're the instructor. Somebody blew up at Toastmasters and said, I'm out of here. Zyga, you're a dick. Later. Something like that. He didn't. Like, insult me, but he insult other people in the club. It was like, oh, the atmosphere is not good and blah, blah. But he never said that before. So. There's not enough anyway, lighting. I got that. Right. So I was, I was infighting, and that's my fault, because I'm, I'm too wimpy of a president. But I'm trying to address that now. Okay. Anyway, that's kind of the size of the problem. That was problem number one. That just added to your your day. Right. And on the same day, later during the day, I get, you know, the call from my girlfriend. So, oh, we it's not working out. We need to talk. Well, she, she didn't actually go that far. It was just, <laughs> I'm not attracted to you anymore. Later. Exactly. 
I don't love you anymore. I don't love you anymore. What's that mean? Collegiato can tell you what that means. You can translate that. Sure. What's that? You don't have authority anymore. Anymore. Uh, that's a delusional statement. What, is, Zaire, can you correct that? Had authority. <laughs> well, I never had authority. There you go. And I was optional. No. You're optional. You are a good guy. You're a sweet guy. You're a, you're a good guy to have around, but you're an optional guy. Yeah, hey, I was an optional guy. You are, what do you fucking mean, we're an optional guy? You still I are still an optional am. guy. I still am, but I was I with a girl. <laughs> I was with a girl. Woo! No, Here, okay. Here's me spinning my finger around there. Woo! No, you're with a no, girl. I, Woo! I, I was in the same situation as you, that's what I'm saying. Oh, he's got war experience. Awesome. <laughs> he's got war wounds. Yeah, I have, I have wounds. Danny can relate, right? Danny had chicks. You're going to have to click the mic now. Yeah, man, like, it was so bad, like, I, I never forget that, that was like the first heartbreak I really had, and that shit. Man, you're a sweet guy, but I gotta move on, man. I got other guys out there. Yeah, and if, if you don't man up, you're gonna take your balls, and you, you lose your self-respect, and you just, that's just how it is. Well, man. Zyger's in the middle of it, he's in the middle of Vietnam right now. Oh, no, Vietnam is over. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Vietnam I'm took one day? I'm like, <laughs> A week, a week is enough. A I week of Vietnam? Week. <laughs> you're still listening to like, uh, you're still listening to Justin Bieber songs. Girl, I need you so, need you in my life so bad, it hurts. Uh. One thing we're going to reiterate right now, since you guys are obviously going to forget this, and since you guys obviously don't realize how this works yet. Just because you tell a girl what she wants to hear, just because you give her something nice, or just because you're a sweet guy, and she tells you she loves you, does not mean she loves you. The point when you become necessary and not optional is when you could tell a girl no. This means that you are able to lead the girl. You need to be able to tell her what to do. You know, a lot of, one of the top relationship taboos, no-nos, don'ts to not do that you'll see in magazines is don't be the controlling boyfriend. Don't tell her what to do. Give her space, right? That's like one of the major hurdles. It's a red flag, girl, if he's telling you what to do. Let me tell you, if you are the guy who can't tell her what to do, that is the major breaking point of the relationship. Of Most relationships fall into the guy who can't tell her what to do and is not willing to tell her what not to do. So if you can't say, look, let's say uh, you're going out. For me, per I'll give you a personal example from my, from my own experience. I don't like girls that wear makeup. I have a girl who, uh, who's like a model. She likes to wear makeup, her industry. And then I even dated another girl who was a... Uh, who sold makeup for a living. So this, you can see, this is even more of a problem. She's like a makeup, one of the makeup artists you see like in one of the major makeup companies and she sells, she, her boss requires her to wear certain makeups and combinations to work because she's basically selling the product. So she is, you know, that's part of her job description is to wear makeup. But I hate, I hate makeup. So any chance I get, I always tell her, look, if I catch her wearing it, I'm telling her, look, that's when you come over, you take it off. You take the clown makeup comes off. Especially when you, we're just going out, it's a non-work day, you shouldn't have makeup. Now, of course, I gotta make allowances because it's part of her job. So, there's times I'm still pissed. I'm like, she's going to work and she's fully justified to be wearing makeup because that's, you know, she's gotta sell it. But, I'm still like, I, I'll tell her, no, I don't like it. Right? When you come home, make sure you take it off. Or when you're with me, make sure you take it off. There was a girl, another girl who I had just started dating. And she came over the first time I met her and she had like, tons of like, rouge and foundation on, like, very hot chick, but just like, I hate fucking rouge. Because I'm, uh, when I'm thinking of the makeup, all I'm thinking is when I'm going to kiss her, that's going to get in the way. That's going to rub off on my face. That's going to rub off my cheek. I hate that shit, right? So immediately, I'm like, look, we're going to this, we're going to this place by the beach. Go in the bathroom. Go take off your makeup. She's like, no, I'm self-conscious. I said, you take off the makeup or I'm kicking you out. So right off the bat, I have to be sure I have enough incentive to make this kind of demand. You know, if I'm making these demands as a guy in charge, I got to make sure that, number one, I'm expressing myself well. I'm giving her enough incentive, meaning I'm, t I'm giving her reasons to meet my demands. Why should she, if you're just a guy in the street and you go, hey, you, miss, I don't like you wearing makeup. I like girls that don't wear makeup. Take that off. Is she going to take off her makeup? No. No, she's going to tell you to fuck off. But if I tell her to make t take off her makeup, she's got to have a reason. She's got she's to gotta think that I'm worth taking that makeup off for. So she's got to see that, oh, this guy stimulates me. This guy is is taking charge of the conversation. He is talking about what he wants to talk about. He is he is candid about his life. If you're not willing to talk about your life right now, what you're like, what you don't like, how you grew up, that type of thing, if you can't speak candidly about yourself and have people invest in you, you know, like uh, Rocky. Rocky's all about uh, underdog story. Anybody, everybody seen Rocky here? Anybody miss it? Boxing, boxing, boxing right? Oh, I had all 
six of them. Yeah, you got all six of them. So everybody knows Rocky's the underdog story. So Rocky, Rocky one, the greatest of all the series, is about this guy who's a fucking loser. He's a loan, he's a, you know, he's hired muscle for like a loan shark or something like that. He, you know, he's not too smart. He's basically just like a riffraff guy. And he's like a loser. He's, he's a bum. He fights, but he, you know, he's got talent, but he's taking dives in matches. He's fighting bums, you know. And then all of a sudden he gets a shot at the world championship, right? Just as kind of a promotional gag. So he starts training for this thing, but himself, his view of himself, he's like a loser still. He hasn't proven anything to himself yet, so he's still a loser. But on our side, because he's so, his life ends up, end, ends up being exposed on film, we get to see like this, this character being developed before our eyes the way uh, Sylvester Stallone wrote the character, uh, we start getting invested in what happens to him. We start cheering for him. We're like, this is the underdog, and we're fighting for this guy. We're pulling for this guy. We want this guy to win at the end, right? We're pulling for Rocky. Even though he loses at the end, we're still pulling for him. We're rooting for this guy. Why are we rooting for him? Because he's a super guy. He beats up everybody. He's an MMA fighter. He's tough. He's, you know, he's super competent at everything. He's a super smooth guy. No, just the opposite. He's a loser. But what attracts us is that he is opening himself up. He's conveying his person, so we get to see what he's like. We get to see his sensitive side. We get to see his caring guy. We get to see his defective. All these flaws we see, just looking at him as a you know as a third party looking at this film. We just it's like we're seeing a picture of one of you guys walking through your life, training for a championship or something to that effect. So we see this character being built before our eyes, and we see a three dimensional guy, and we go, oh, I'm invested in in him now because he has given me a picture of what he's like. If you're a blank slate like Danny, you just come in here the first time in class, you're a, you're a guy who doesn't say anything. You're a guy who's silent. Nobody's going to invest in you. You may have the exact same story for as Rocky, but if you can't convey that story to us, we're not invested in you. Even though you are the underdog, we're not pulling for you. There's guys at this academy who have been here a while who don't have a lot of posts, who don't try to form relationships with the other students, who don't talk to them, who don't come to class. And yet they write a post and they wonder, why doesn't anybody respond to my post? Why do so many people respond to Zenic? Why do so many people respond to DDP, to, to Zyger, to, um, you know, to Bogler? Because these students make effort, make an effort to talk to the other students. These students make an effort. Yeah, you gotta get up the game. There you go. They, they make an effort to convey themselves. So other students become emotionally invested in their lives. So, you have to get somebody to emotionally invest in your life. You have to go, oh, I care about that person. Before you start writing about your, uh, where you went on a Saturday night, who you hang out with, nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about your favorite cereal. Nobody cares about what you, where you live, what kind of car you drive. Nobody cares about that. Nobody has a reason to care about that. You have to give them a reason. That means you have to tell them about yourself. Now, we use the example of Rocky. It's this prize fighter. But on his side, when he's telling his story, he feels like a loser. Like you guys feel right now, the reason why you don't want to tell your story is you think, if I tell my story to this person, I'm going to feel like a loser. They're going to think I'm a loser. They're going to not want to talk to me. So that's why I'm not telling my story. If I tell my story, they're going to want to not talk to me. Two problems here. Number one, if you don't share your story, nobody has any reason to emotionally invest in you. That's number problem number one. Problem number two is you don't know how to manage your expectations. Like I gave the example before. You're going to tell somebody something they don't like to hear. Like, for instance, Zyger is going to tell people he likes listening to Justin Bieber music. And Danny's going to go, Justin Bieber's gay. That's lame. I don't hang with guys who listen to Justin Bieber music. So now we got a problem. We got Zyger liking Justin Bieber music and Danny hating Justin Bieber music. Well, since Zyger has to learn how to manage his expectations, he has to learn how to make it okay for him to like Justin Bieber music. He has to learn how to punish and reward those who either violate his expectations or meet his expectations. So if Danny is violating his expectation, which is that it's okay for him to listen to Justin Bieber music, he needs to punish Danny. How would he punish Danny, DVP? He would punish him. He would punish him by saying he could just scold him and say, "Dude, you're being such a fag." And Justin Bieber's good because of this. And that. Yeah, Actually, Justin Bieber's here. the greatest music ever. You're, you're yeah. high, or something sticking, to that effect. Sticking your expectation. Something to you can read the ebook. You'll find different ways to punish. He could say he can make a negative association. Everybody loves Justin Bieber. Bieber. Those who guys that don't like Justin Bieber are fools. It doesn't have to make sense, but I'm just giving an example. Um, he could he could make a. He could be sarcastic about it. He could be, what? Yeah, you're so cool, bro. You don't like Justin Bieber. He could, uh, he could just tell him straight, be direct with him. I love Justin Bieber, right? He could ignore him. Danny could yeah. be trying to clown on him. Oh, you like Justin Bieber? He's lame. And, uh, Zyger could start singing a Justin Bieber song, right? Danny's trying to gain, gain his attention by making fun of him. But since Zyger 
has to care about Danny's att- has to care about Danny trying to get his attention for that to even matter. Zygern can simply ignore him. He can start singing a Justin Bieber song, right? That lets Danny know, I don't care about your expectation. My expectation matters here. So there's various ways you can read the ebook to punish Danny for violating his expectation. If Danny meets his expectation and he says, oh, now that you explain it, Justin Bieber, ah, oh, I see what you like. That's cool. Zyger can, should reward guys who are meeting his expectation. So now he's encouraged to meet, Z- Danny's encouraged to meet Zyger's expectation because Zyger's rewarding him. Yeah. You like Justin Bieber? Oh, high five. Oh, you like Justin Bieber? Good job. You like Justin Bieber? Yeah. I knew you were a cool guy, right? So he could do something to say, hey, it's good that you're meeting my expectation. Now in the future, Danny is encouraged to meet Zyger's expectation. Now that Zyger is expressing himself, he's sharing his candid reactions, he's sharing his thoughts and his feelings with Danny, and he's managing his expectations. This is the number one reason why people don't share their uh, share their thoughts and feelings with others, because they're worried about what people are going to think of them. They're worried about people clowning on them. They don't know how to manage that clowning. They don't know how to manage a negative reaction to what they said. So if they can't do that, of course they're going to put up a front. That's why many people you talk to today, their whole life is, what's up? What's up? What's up with you, Danny? What's up, Danny? Nothing, nothing. Yeah, exactly, nothing. nothing. You say sup back. You're, if I say sup to you, you're probably going to say sup to me, or I'm fine, or nothing, right? That's the typical answer. So we have two people saying, I'm cool, and you're saying back, I'm cool. That's essentially what we're both saying to each other. I'm cool, you're cool. But really, we're not. We're both putting up a front. Neither of us is expressing who we are, and neither of us knows how to manage our expectations. We're both worried about not looking cool in front of the other person. That's the major flaw in expression right there. So right off the bat, we don't know how to stimulate other people. That's problem number one, okay? The other side is, like we talked about with Zyger's uh, girlfriend, is not being able to say no to somebody. So I'll go back to my example with a girl with the makeup. I had already given her positive incentive. I've already stimulated her, told her my person, who I am. Put it out on paper, right, so to speak. So she know she has a good idea of who I am, so she's invested a little bit in the beginning. Now I'm starting to say no. Don't do this. I hate makeup. I don't like that. Girls that don't wear makeup, ugh, they give me that trashy feel. I like girls that are, do this. That's sexy, right? Immediately I'm punishing and rewarding. I'm telling her what my expectation is and how to meet it. Now I tell her, look, makeup's coming off. She takes it off. I start washing the other side of her face while she's washing the other side of her cheek. We got the makeup off. She puts it back on when I leave. She thinks she's slick. She goes in the bathroom and says, oh, hold on. I need to take a pee before we go. She puts on foundation. I go, what the – are you fucking crazy? Get back in there and take that off. This is like the first, first time we met. After a, after a while, just talking to her. Um, this is just one of the girls uh, – this was a long time ago. Yes, yeah, so this is a girl I've, I met online. Just to tell, This is an example of how powerful written expression is. The only time I talked to her before that was just online. I had written about myself online. Okay. Are you on – this was this was a dating website. So this is just one example of how to meet girls. I don't. Were you like, talking like through IMs? Or no, email? no IMs before that. Other than that, just a phone call. So initial post and then phone call immediately to phone. Okay. You don't so, encourage that, do you? Don't encourage what? Like online dating websites. Definitely not for you because you can't even fucking talk to a person in in person. You need to be able to talk to person to people face to face on the phone at the very least. I can okay. get away with writing. And, and uh, you know, posting a profile and, you know, Craigslist, Plenty of Fish, whatever, because I'm already competent at expressing myself. I can talk to you on the phone if need be. I can talk to you face-to-face if need be. Right, you don't need more practice. You always want to talk to a person over the phone at the very least, even over text message, and definitely face-to-face if you can. So if I can go from phone to, like, hey, let's meet up and talk real quick or let's go to a coffee shop and talk real quick, I'm going to recommend that over talking to her on the phone because it's much easier – to get your expectations met over the phone. It's much easier to stimulate another person and talk to them and get them emotionally invested in you face-to-face versus over the phone. Now, because I have more training than you, I'm very quickly more candid by writing. I know it takes a lot more effort to write and be candid than just to talk right now. I can have voice inflection right now. I can, if I'm, you can see my face, I can use my facial expression. I can use hand gestures. So I have more tools at my disposal the closer I get to you. So face-to-face, I have much, many more tools to use. Over the phone, I have my voice. I'm limited in what I can do. Writing, just writing or just posting on a forum or you know, in a profile, I have to be very proficient at expression to attract somebody, especially when I'm competing with other people who are trying to compete for her attention. I have to be proficient at what I do. I have to be efficient at it. I can't just ramble on. I can't just post a, you know, a, a, a three-page essay for her to read. She's going to get bored after the first paragraph. I have to be able to convey myself very quickly and get to the point. So I'm trained to do that. That's why I can get a good response from her. I didn't even post my pictures. I got a hot chick from accounting, 
And that surprised me because she said, oh, I worked in accounting. But I saw her, I was like, oh, shit. She works accounting at a modeling agency or something. So You'll liquidate her assets. Yeah, I would liquidate her assets, exactly. So <laughs> we meet up, Hello. and we're on the way to the beach. After a second time of, of sending her back to the bathroom to remove her makeup, she takes out her makeup to put something on in the mirror. And they say, are you fucking kidding what? me? I grab her makeup tube, and I throw it out in the middle of the divider. Oh, yeah, and, then, and she's about to get out of the car to get it. She can't believe I threw her makeup out there. And I say, if you open that door to get that makeup, you're walking home. So she Ooh. sat in the car, and that was that. Again, not an example of what you should do. <laughs> Don't try this at home. I'm a professional. The moral of the story is you have to be willing to say no. You have to be willing to say no. You have to be willing to lose her. I could have lost her. That could have been a bad move. Oh, I thought you said that she did leave and never called No, no, no. Um, I kind of knew she wasn't going to – her makeup wasn't that important to leave the car in the middle of the street and go get it and have me drive off. So I was kind of banking on that too. But I figured I had – I, I had built up – saying like, oh, I, I told her to get out and then she did and I, that was like the story? No, I figured I had built up enough emotional investment that I could start making those types of demands because, I, I again, I build up emotional investment very quickly. So the more proficient you become at it, the more – the quicker you could share your person – the more quickly uh, people become emotionally invested in you. If you're very silent, you're, it takes a long time for people to pry you open. It's going to also take a long time for people to get emotionally invested in you. Everyone loves the strong side of life, huh? <laughs> yeah, I learned, I learned that the movie, hard way. Movie <laughs> trick. Movie trick. Okay, so uh, Zyger. The main problem is when girls find you optional, that means you're not saying no to them. You're not directing them. You're not telling them what they should do and what they shouldn't do. You're allowing them. You're very permissive. You're like, you don't want to have a conversation. You just want things to go smoothly. And it seems on the surface like things are going smoothly because she's saying, oh, you're a very nice guy. You're giving me my way. But all of a sudden, you're going to get that call. Oh, we need to talk. That call means, in English, it means you haven't been telling me what I shouldn't be doing. You haven't been directing my behavior. You haven't been giving me your expectations. You've been very permissive and allowing my expectations to dictate the relationship. I don't feel secure with you. That means I'm ultimately not attracted to you. You haven't been able to create order in this relationship by taking charge of this relationship. I'm not attracted to you. That's what the sh that's the long version of we need to talk or I'm just not into you. Girls are going to, you know, they're not going to understand how to say it in the terms I just explained to you. They're going to get a feeling like, uh, we just don't click or I'm just not feeling it or um, we can be friends. We, need, we just, I feel like we're more like friends, right? They're going to feel it. They're not going to understand why they don't feel it. Right. And or the reason why they don't. the exact opposite. Like, oh, you're too controlling or something like that. Exactly. Well, it's actually the opposite. I don't like your alpha male attitude. I don't like your attitude. I don't I can't tell you how many girls have told me, you're an asshole, you're a jerk, I don't like this and that. But these, by the same token, the I've never had a girl. Still fucking with you. Other than high school, where I had my first hard lesson, after that point, I've never had a girl tell me, let's just be friends. It's not even on my radar. I don't even expect it. A girl will either. Like me or not like me, there will never be a I, let's just be friends. That's never happened to me before after this point because I learned at that point if you are not d direct with her about what your expectations are, what you expect from her, and what is not permissible by you, you are going to be that guy who's option guy. That's a lot of where you guys are right now. You're option guy. The craziest thing is that I remember at the beginning of the relationship, the first maybe two months, she was telling me how, oh, I'm, I'm such a controlling guy. I'm telling her what to do, and she's really not the kind of girl who follows directions like that. Yeah. Like, you know, she's uh, she's making an exception. And then I softened because she was like telling me, "Oh, I'm I'm an independent girl." That's exactly uh, that what the girl like, I'm dating right now told me. She's probably the one of the toughest girls I've ever dated. That says, "Oh no, you're too controlling. You're too controlling. I don't like blowjobs." <laughs> now she gags on that. Okay, that's the moral of the story. The point is, <laughs> you have to. So you break her will with your own. You, yeah, now, you have to, and then she stopped being attracted. Yes. There you go. You have to, again, girls don't know what they want. When they're telling you this and this, this is the way I, you need to be nice. You need to be this. You need to just make sure that you're meeting her need for order. And the main need for order is to tell her what to do, what to do and what not to do, not to listen to her. If she was in charge of the relationship, it, it would not work out. Girls don't know what they're doing in a relationship. They have all kinds of crazy dysfunctional expectations that we talk about. If you listen to podcasts, you'll know. If you've listened to any of the calls, you'll know. Girls are sarcastic. Girls aren't forthright. Big L, what the fuck are you doing? Oh. Can you stop fucking folding origami near the microphone? <laughs> um, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so you need to be forthright with this girl or with your, any girls you're planning on getting a relationship with. You need to be sure that you could say... Look, these are the expectations we're following. We're not following your expectations. We're following my expectations. I'm in charge. Whenever you get in that haggling, compromise stage, like this girl I'm currently dating, 
she's the most compromising type girl I've ever known where she was like, we need to compromise. She's all in the feminist bullshit and the dating advice columns and she's hearing it from her friends. You're not compromising. You're not. And she's always telling me, and she's always trying to break up with me. You're not this. You're not that. But every time I just come back, it's like two weeks. You haven't talked. I broke up with you. But I just go right back to here's the incentive. And then here's what you're not allowed to do. Yep. And every time she's just falling more and more in love. Every girl I've dated, I'm telling you in love. In love. It's like a guarantee. And it's not because I'm super special or I'm super handsome guy. It's because I know that functional relationships always result in the girl falling in love, deeply in love. You don't become an option. You become a necessity in her life. 